I recently checked out Gamma K's TK75 SE and I was pleasantly surprised by just how much keyboard you were getting for the money. So when they reached out asking if I'd like to review their TK75 Pro, I just couldn't say no. In today's review, I'm taking a look at their all new full aluminium budget keyboard to see if it deserves a spot in your setup. Before we begin, I wanna let you know that this video was sponsored by Gamma K who provided the TK75 Pro free of charge for the purpose of this review as well as paid a fee. However, rest assured all opinions you hear today are completely my own and unbiased. Let's start off with a look at the unboxing. The box is nothing too special just a plain white box and some branding. Inside, the TK75 Pro comes wrapped in a plastic sleeve as well as dust cover. Underneath, you're getting a user manual as well as an accessory section that contains a USB-A to USB-C cable and a dual keycap and switch puller. Overall, the unboxing experience was simple and straightforward, focusing on the essentials, which helps keep the cost down. Okay, I'm quickly gonna go over some of the main specs and features before I get into my own thoughts and opinions. The TK75 Pro comes in at $89.99 on Amazon US or $99.99 on GammaK.com, but they've got an early bird price for a limited time coming in at $79.99 on Amazon US or $89.99 on GAMK.com. Check the description for discount codes and pricing. It's got a 75% layout with 81 keys and a knob. The board features tri-mode connectivity, meaning you can connect via Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, or wired USB-C. It's also got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. With the main specs and features out of the way, let's start with a surface look at this keyboard. I've got the black and yellow theme on hand for this review, but the TK75 Pro is also available in a lighter white and pink variant. Whilst I do enjoy the theme I've got here, I would have appreciated some alternate keycaps to replace the yellow accents for more of an overall stealthy build, but it's only a very minor name. The non-exploded 75% layout offers a nice compact footprint with the delete key in the F13 spot and it is ANSI layout only. The board is fully constructed from a CNC aluminium so it's really nice and hefty. The finish is prone to fingerprints but again, not really a major deal for me. The board is rocking a gasket mount structure and it's definitely evident in the amount of bounce you're getting. The underside is super lightly decorated with a big GK logo machined into the case as well as just a rubber case foot in each corner. There's no adjustable feet as is normal with aluminium keyboards but the larger case feet give the board a generous type and angle that I found to be quite comfortable. The main edges are all kept clean with the connected Activity options situated under the ledge so they're tucked away nicely. Right in the center you're getting the USB-C port as well as the connection mode toggle which lets you toggle between Bluetooth, wired or 2.4 gigahertz. Farther off to the right you're getting the 2.4 gigahertz wireless receiver sunk into the slot in the case. Back up on the surface the TK75 Pro features a single function volume knob. It's made from an aluminium alloy metal with a brushed finish. The eagle eyed viewers might just be a small bit triggered by the alignment but again not too serious. There's another Gamma K logo machined into this portion of the top case as well. Besides that there's not much else noteworthy going on up here so let's talk about the key Caps. So the keycaps are double shot PBT in the Cherry profile. They feel super high quality with yellow top left aligned legends that look super crisp. The main offices are all bold with the font weight thinning out on the outer keys. I really like these keycaps and I definitely don't think it's an aspect of the board that Gamma K skimped out on. A layer deeper, the TK75 Pro ships with these KTT Hyacinth switches and I heard a lot about them so I was keen to try them out. They're a pre-lube 5 pin linear switch that require an operating force of 45 grams so they're decently light and I didn't personally experience any fatigue over longer typing sessions. I actually found them to be really nice and satisfying to use. With the overall build and configuration Gamma K went for here, it gives the TK75 Pro a marvelly sound profile with a deep talk, which will be sure to warrant a lot of attention. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about the stabilizers either. No tick, no rattle. Now, unfortunately, QMK and V support was one of the sacrifices that Gamma K had to make here to get this keyboard in under this price point, but that's to be expected. The Gamma K software driver is familiarly lacking in aesthetics, but if you have the patience, it allows you to pretty much do all the customization you would want. The board ships with full per key RGB, and I do have to say the backlight is vibrant, so I was fairly impressed. I think you will be too. You also get N key rollover or anti-ghosting if you plan on using this keyboard for gaming. Okay, at this point in the video, I'm gonna perform a teardown to showcase the internal structure of the keyboard. To get inside the board, you'll need to uninstall your keycaps and switches before finding a series of hidden inner case screws. Upon removal, the top case housing should lift away, revealing the internals. Make sure to unplug the connectors on the back before you go any further. The TK75 Pro comes with five layers of sound dampening foam. It's rocking a polycarbonate plate with plate-mounted stabilizers and some fairly light flex cutting. The PCB is five pin hot swappable with side facing RGB LEDs and this time around you're getting a lot of flex cuts, which really limits the foam configurations you can perform. Though in my opinion, I don't think it's a really big issue because I really enjoyed the stock sound profile on this keyboard. In the bottom case, you'll find the 4000 milliamp hour battery as well as the gaskets I mentioned earlier. Okay, as always, it's time to play the sound test before I leave you with my closing remarks and recommendations.
Okay, so overall, I find it really hard to find many major flaws with this keyboard. It's a full aluminium 75% keyboard with a really premium feeling, and a typing experience that both sounds and feels honestly really great. I think it's got all the little features that make up a really solid keyboard, and I honestly have to give it to Gamma K. They've been coming out with a lot of really solid performers for prices you can't really complain about. Of course, there are some caveats to a keyboard priced this competitively. You're not getting any QMK or V support, and the case finish is slightly on the cheaper side, but I really don't see any of these nitpicks as a cause for dismissing this keyboard. If you're venturing into the world of custom keyboards or thinking of going out aluminium on a budget, I recommend you add the TK75 Pro to your list. It does all the basics perfectly. That concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated and it's free. Another huge thanks to the people over at Gamma K for making this video possible.